Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. Now, on this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and collectibles. I give them a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. A hundred pounds? No, definitely not. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say reject it. Go to auction. Try and get some more money there. Today, the show comes to you from Derby. Good crowd of people here. They brought along their treasures. They are determined to do business, either to walk away with cash or gamble and go to auction. Either way, they want the real deal. The den is already in full swing, and our first deal of the day is underway. David Hateney is a man of style, but will he be tempted by these ladies' purses? You've brought a little bit of um, vintage fashion. Absolutely. You know. Are these things you've collected to yourself? Um, yes, um, over the kind of past um, five to kind of six years, um, just going out in Camden Market and oh. two pieces were from Southampton that my mum picked up. So, um, you know, I've used two. Yeah. Because I love these. I love this. I love this one the best. I but do. The condition's not great. I mean, the like condition it. isn't great, no, yeah. that's true. But it's. it's it doesn't it's, bother you, that. No, it's the wear and tear. It's, it's you know. Part the of it. Absolutely. Mm. It's like a lot of things. You know, but, you can wear them and. Yeah, but some of these things from the 20s and 30s do survive absolutely immaculately. Oh, do they? Oh, I've and been then, a bit. Uh, I, then you get great prices. <laughs> unfortunately, I've, yeah, I've not kept it. And in, uh, you like this one, you said? I do. I love, I love the embroidery. Yes. Um, I love the inside. It's got a contrast. Yeah. Um, kind of and this it. one's quite complete. I must say, yes. I just had a quick look inside. It's still got the mirror here yes. with the wrapping yeah. still on. Yeah. I've not used that. Oh. It's a bit too glitzy for me, I thought. Is it? Hmm. Can find, I can find an outfit with that. Oh, well, I'm sure you would do. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really my thing, this. You might mm. have No, brought... I can I, uh, kind of guess that. <laughs> oh, what do you mean you kind of guessed it? I wish it said Louis Vuitton on it or um, oh, some really? other uh, Hermes that, yeah. or... <laughs> <laughs> Some yeah. names on it would really uh, get me revved up. Yeah, no, unfortunately, so, uh, they haven't got names. In I might not be the best buyer of these, but I'll get some money out just in case it's okay. going to tempt you. And mm. uh, is a fiver any good for the lot? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me say a tenner. Sounds a bit mean, a fiver, doesn't That's it? That's mean. Well, 15 quid then. Yeah. Well, not oh me God, all. I thought it'd be the <laughs> I'm not exciting you here. I'm going to change it quickly to £20 before David comes and gives you some advice. Yeah. Well, I think, Namil, I think you've swum the channel because <laughs> that one looks fairly unsaleable. And that's the one I really like as well. Is that the one I you mean, like? I mean, uh, the condition I, is not good I love good that enough. one as well. I love this. It one. looks a that. little bit shabby, that yeah, one. Yeah, it it looks like it's been well used. Yeah. I'm not sure about the desirability of any of those. Not even this one. Like, can you imagine someone holding that? How pretty is it? 15 to 20. Yeah. 20 to 30 is what the experts say. I have Did to say, okay. on this occasion, they might be optimistic. I would have no hesitation in putting your delicate hand across that table, <laughs> picking up those two £10 notes like and getting out of here before this mind. clever dealer <laughs> realises what he's paid. <laughs> She's mesmerised me, I've got to tell you. <laughs> I'm going to have to buy a drink with that one. <laughs> um, OK. You can go to Oxford. Uh, I think I'm going to take it. I thought you might. I don't like hanging around, so I think this is a okay. quick snapshot. Good. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very much for bringing them in. Thank you. So has David paid over the odds for the bags? We'll find out later. In the meantime, Michael's getting all steamed up about the next item. But will his offer be on the right track? David and auctioneer Stephen Iredell are looking on with excitement. Wow, this is a nice lot, Paul, isn't it? Yes, I'm glad you like it. Is it part of your childhood memories? No, unfortunately it's not. I bought it roughly 15 years ago from a toy fair in Derbyshire, okay. and now it's time to let it go. Tell the people at home what is it, when was it made, and all about it. Well, it's made by the firm Bing, which are German. It probably dates from probably 1911, I would assume, into the 20s. Keep going, I'm getting interested yeah, yeah. in it, yeah. We've even got little, if I can take the top off, little candle holders inside, which would illuminate the building. Yeah. And I believe round there we've got the Bing mark, haven't we? We certainly have, yes. It's one of the earlier marks, I believe. 
Yeah, okay. I like the fact that it's just a nice little bit of kit, really. Yeah. Now, Stephen, I saw this coming through the door. Bing. Yeah. 1920s. Yeah, I really rate it. It's the holy grail name, you know, of tin plate toys, isn't mm, it? Absolutely. What's your first thoughts about it? I think it's fantastic. I'm, I've put an estimate of two to three hundred pounds on it, but I've seen them make three fifty and four hundred. I'm of the same mind. It isn't often that you see a nice, clean piece of Bing, um, and I think this has a lot going for it. Some of the more grand stations can bring many thousands of pounds. We, we've sold them. Um, I've got a feeling Hoggy is going to go a bundle on this. Let's see what he puts down on the table. How much did you pay for it 15 years ago? It will not reflect on the offer I'm going to make you, I'm just wondering. Yes, it was round about 90. Yeah. Mm. I, I like yeah. it, you know, oh, I, can just, yeah. I can see that uh, going somewhere to someone I know. So, can right. I make you an offer on it, Paul? You certainly can. Thank you. So we go 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Uh -huh. 20, 40, 60, 180. It's uh, not a bad start. It's a very good start. Oh, it's it, yes. Yes, going along the right lines. Yeah. Now, Hoggy, I've come in at this stage, and I'll tell you why. You like this, Hoggy. A lot. I know you like it a lot, and I know you're going to try and buy it, so I'm going to try and help if I can. Yeah. The independent valuers and the auctioneers, they've all said two to three hundred. I think it's well worth that three hundred pound money and maybe a bit more. So I don't know if you can tempt him or you can't, so I'm going to leave it with you. Otherwise, we're off to the auction, but okay. I know Hoggy likes it, so yes. I'm right. trying to help him, if I can, buy yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just shattered my dreams. <laughs> I, had, I imagined taking this home and showing it to my grandchildren oh. <laughs> and keeping it for them forever, but that's another story. So, a yeah. mm -hmm. bit more money on the table. So we're 180, yeah. 230. I think a little bit more. 240 final offer. Now, you can take it to auction, like David said, and there will be buyers yeah. out there for being. There's always buyers for quality. Yeah, sure. It's whether you want to gamble for the auction yeah. or whether you just want to take a bit of cold cash from a dealer. OK, I uh, think I'm, I'm happy with that because I've made a profit as yeah. well. So we're both I'm happy, happy to do okay, a deal then. with that. Right, it's going to go to a good home. Michael really wanted that train station. I'm not sure it's the grandkids that will be playing with it, though, hey, Michael? I'm Peter. Nice Hi, to meet Peter. You. Nice to meet you. Now, it's over to Simon's table. So, Peter, you've bought in this Ushabti, That's which correct. I believe is the correct name for this Egyptian artefact. It is, yes. Is this something you're particularly interested in, um, antiquities or Egyptian art? Well, we've collected quirky things, you know, over the years, and uh, we have been to Egypt, and we went and saw the tombs. And, uh, it w you know, we thought it would be nice to own something that had been in there. Yeah, so, so the fascination of all that sort of Egyptian and the, and the age yes. and everything. Yeah. And then by actually going there and seeing it, yes. the fact that you can own a piece of it, I guess, really sort of, uh, you know, cements that, doesn't it? it? It's a big buzz. Yeah. 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 What can you tell me about this? Uh, well, it's about 600 to 400 years BC. Wow. Um, it was a grave goods. Like a tomb, in other words. That's correct, right? yeah, yes, yeah. that's correct. That's really all I can tell you about it. Well, this is probably one of the oldest things we've ever had on the show in terms of the age of it. I yeah. mean, as you say, anything from 400 to 600 years BC. Yes. Um, these aren't, though they're obviously very, very old, they're not, in fact, that rare, though, are they? No, because they're not. What's happened over the, you know, a lot of these tombs have been opened and there are literally thousands of these. So when you think of something with that age, immediately you sort of see pound signs, don't you? Yeah. Because you think something that old has got to be worth a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Because value-wise, these aren't that expensive to buy. I see. What we've got here is actually made of pottery. Yeah. And it's quite sort of naively modelled, but then... When you think about the age of it, the very fact that it's remained intact for, for all these hundreds and thousands of years is, is quite incredible, it's a miracle. really. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, I think one like this, the value of it would be, for something so old, this sounds pathetic, £30. Yeah, I, I would have thought it was a little bit better than that. Uh, you know, I'd like to have a really have a think about it because... Well, would you like to get David's opinion? I very much would like to, yeah. David, we've got an antiquity here. It's nearly as old as you. Um... <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> um, 
interesting lot. And whenever you see one of these antiquities, you know, the mind starts to race. We all know about Tutankhamun, and so we look at that and think, should it be worth a reasonable amount of money? Well, our independent valuers and the auctioneers say 30 to 50 quid. If you fancy a gamble, it's quite impressively mounted. Somebody might fancy having a go and might be prepared to pay 50, 60, 70 quid. On the other hand, they may not. So it's all in the eye of the beholder. I quite like it. Thank you, David. Thank you. Right. I'd Peter. Like, I'd like to gamble. You'd like to gamble? I would. So you'd like to try your luck in auction? I certainly would, yeah. You'd like to get more than my measly offer of £30 would, pound yeah. in auction? Yeah. Well, I, I don't blame you trying it, I thought David said. Best of luck in auction. Thank you very much for bringing Thank it Thank you very Peter. much. Simon didn't quite manage to wrap up that deal, so it's over to the auction room for Peter and his Yushapti. How did you come to acquire it and why did you buy it? Well, we'd just come back from Egypt and we'd uh, visited the tombs right. and we decided we wanted something, so we uh, bought it from a dealer in London, a dealer okay. in antiquities. Okay. okay, what did you pay to this dealer in antiquities? I would say about 60 to 70 pounds. Okay, 60 to 70 pounds seems realistic. How long ago was that? Oh, a few years ago, about six or seven years. Quite a few years ago. Yeah. You sat down the day with Simon Schneider. Simon said, I'll give you 30 quid for your little bit of antiquity. You've decided to gamble. The estimate is 30 to 50. Are they going to do better? Well, let's find out. Okay. Lot number 715 is the Egyptian Shabti with a pale turquoise glaze. And I've got a couple of bids on commission. Starts with me at 40 pounds, five do I see? At 40 pounds, five, 50, five, 50 pounds. They like five it. Now. At 55, new place. 60, 5, 70, 5, at 70 pounds. Maybe absolutely. you're going on a new holiday to Egypt. Pounds, Could be. <laughs> at 70 pounds, all done then, and selling at 70 pounds. OK, so 70 pounds, the gavel has gone down. We have a little bit of commission. I make it very close to 60 pounds when you take the commission off. What's your first reaction to that? Great, great. It was worth the gamble. And satisfied? Very satisfied, yes. Very you virtually got your money back for it, yep. what you paid years ago. Yes, we've had six or seven years of pleasure out of looking at it and, you know. I think that's not a bad thing to do. You bought something, you enjoyed it for six or seven years. It's come to the auction, you've had a day out. The gavel has gone down and you're getting 60 quid in cash to take home. Good real deal, that is. Coming up, Alison can't wait to get her hands on the next item. And this is right up my street. I find it thrilling. You will have the biggest profit today, I tell you. Really? Yeah. Yes. But just how much profit? Find out shortly. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. We're in Derby today. Let's go to Alison's table. Will this soap dish get her in a lather? This is where I become undone, so to speak, because I just love Dalton stoneware. I find it thrilling, and I'm very pleased that it's come to my table. I love the colour, I love the shape, I love the dragonfly, and this is right up my street. How did you come by it? I bought it at a car boot sale. At a boot fair. Lovely. How long ago? It was probably eight or nine years ago, if not, if not longer. And how much did you pay for it? I paid 50, 50 pence. 50p? Yes. Well, you will have the biggest profit today, I tell you. Really? Yeah. Yes. Have you wanted to collect more of this sort of thing? Or? No, I don't collect anything in particular. I knew it was Royal Dalton and I thought I'd just buy it. But no, I haven't, I haven't really collected any, uh, you know, it hasn't started me wanting to collect more. OK. Um, if I turn it over, this would have been made for the coal tar soap company as a sort of display piece. We do have a slight clack to the glaze here. Yes. This would have been done during the firing. This initial here, EP, this was um, created by a woman called Emily Partington. Right, yes. Not one of the best um, artists, um, but she would have been a junior assistant right, yes. and uh, she would have been responsible for this piece. I see. Right, well, I'll try and buy it off you today. All right. And if not, you will be able to send, send it to auction. I should be sad not to buy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, 50. 
You paid 50p, and that's 50 pounds. Yes. It's not bad, that's is it? That's like a zillion times yes, more. It's not too bad, is it? What? Maybe a little more? Did you have a price in mind? 80. 80. That's fair enough. I'll pay you 80. It's not worth 80. That's more than what I should be paying. I should be paying for that probably about 60, 70 really? quid, yes. You say you, you did say you liked it, didn't you? I love it. I was not going to go to auction. It was going to come home with me the moment I saw it on my table. Right. What do you want to do? Take my money or go to auction? I'll take the money, Alison. All right, then we've got a deal, Alan. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. I should look after it. Excellent. Good. Thank you. Good. Alan certainly cleaned up there, but Alison seems pretty chuffed to add that to her personal collection. Ever fancied coming on the show? Well, you can. It's dead simple. All you have to do is to log on to ITV.com. That's going to tell you when we're coming to your area. Come along, meet all the team, and I shall look forward to seeing you. Thanks, David. Time to get over to Simon's table for his next item. Now, Keith, you brought in a Half Hunter watch and Albert chain and a little yeah. stamp box. Yeah. How did you end up owning these? Uh, well, actually, it's, it's my um, stepson's. Right. He, he had it left him. And uh, when he knew that I was coming over today, he said, would I take it and um, see if he can get some money for it. So you can turn it into cash? See if you can turn so it, into it cash. wasn't something that had any particular sentimental attachment or...? Oh, it's just skint. <laughs> it's just good. <laughs> That's probably the most honest answer yeah. we'll get today. Yeah. Well, what you've got here is a what we call a half hunter. The reason they're called half hunters is because there's a little bit of glass in the middle. Saved you opening the watch to find out what the time was. You've got the numerals and enamel on the outside, and you can just make out where the hands are. Yeah. You've got a double Albert here, which is uh, solid silver. Every link is hallmarked. Pretty bog standard watch and chain there. I actually like this little thing most. It's right. a, a nice little stamp box, mm. uh, a little silver envelope, which was just a, big enough to fit in a postage stamp. So they used to make boxes for everything in the olden days, didn't they? Like little stamp boxes as well. Yeah, quality as well. It's very nice quality. It actually says stamps on it as well, if you look at it carefully. Yeah. So I'm going to go straight in, make a very good offer for it that you can say yes to, and you can take some money home to your son-in-law. All right. So, Keith, for your pocket watch and chain and little stamp, I'm going to offer you 20, 40, 60 English pounds. No. No? <laughs> he wants a bit more for him than that, yeah. He wants he's a bit got more. A figure, he's got a figure in mind that he asked me to, yeah. Right, was it very close to that? Because obviously um, we're pretty near the mark there. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, I think he wants a little bit more than that. A so. little bit more? Yeah. Would another 10 pounds Making £70 be enough? No, so I, I think, no? think another 20 was at least is what he's looking for. What, 90 quid? 90 quid. I think that might be pushing it a bit, to be yeah. honest with you, yeah. See, I've had a look, the watch isn't working. No. And it's got a crack on the dial. Yeah. And it's a little bit bashed on the back. Yeah. Um, I see this lot sort of about 90, 100 pounds to sell. OK. So, you know, I think yeah. also if you put it in auction, to be honest with you, Keith, I don't think you're going to end up with much more than that at the end okay. of the day. Yeah. I'll tell you what I'll do, just to make it a little bit sweeter. 80 pounds. That is going to be my maximum bid. It's up to you. OK. Um, yeah, OK, we'll do a deal. We'll do a deal for 80 quid? Yeah. Well, I hope your stepson's happy with that. Thank you very much for coming in today. If not, I'll have to make it up for him. Well, don't do that. <laughs> Next up on David Haightney's table is a pearl of an item, but will it catch his eye? So you brought here a ring. Tell me yeah. something about it. Um, it was my aunt. She had it when she was 21. And um, it was left to my sister when my aunt died. And then when my sister died, it was, it was passed on to me. So, But unfortunately, I can't wear it because it's too small for me. So I thought, uh, you know, it's just lying around him, sort of get rid of it. Well, it's a very pretty little ring, I will say. It's a little yeah. cultured pearl here in the centre. Yeah. And I think there's eight small diamonds around the edge. And I didn't see a hallmark in it. No. There's a number in it, 134. I don't know what that means, really. Um, there could have been a, mark, a hallmark in it, and it could have been Actually altered at some time not, in yeah. its life. Yeah. Yeah, it looks as though it was probably made in the 40s, 50s. Yeah, I think. probably, yeah. I think the uh, little... 
cultured pearls come out at some time and been put back in with some glue. I can see yeah, some glue have around done, it. Not whilst we've had no, it. No, but it has been. Yeah. It's not uh, as it should be placed in there properly. Um, well, it's a pretty little item. How much would you like for it? Well, Judith. Offer, offer me something. Well, I'll get the dosh out here oh. and let's see if we can tempt you, shall I? Yeah. Here's a starter. 60, 80, 100 pounds. No, definitely not. That's definitely. a very definite, isn't it? Are you thinking this is worth a lot more than this? Uh, hmm, yes. Come on, Judith, give me a clue. No, nope. you're the expert. Well, Judith, seeing it hasn't got the hallmark and it just wants a little bit of money spending on it resetting the um, pearl, um, I don't think I'm going to excite you on this one very much. So I'm only going to say £130, and that's where I'd want to be on this ring. No, definitely not. I don't think I'd want to give any more than £130 for it. No, it's a I very want pretty a lot ring. more than that. You'd want more? Would you rather go take it to the auction? Yes, I would, yeah. Judith, right, thank you very, thank you much, very much for thank ringing you. it. I hope it does well. Thank you very much. Bad luck, David. So this little number is off to the auction room. It's over to the Duke to see how it fares. She can't make it today. I'm looking after her interest. It's coming up right now with a reserve of 180 quid. Did she do the right thing by turning down the 130 pounds? Well, I'm about to find out. It's here now. Lot number 820 is the diamond, pearl and gold-coloured metal ladies' ring, and it starts with me at £150. Straight in at £150. At £150, I'm bid 160 now. At £150, I'm bid 160, 160. It's just below the, the reserve. I'm not quite there at £170, 180 do I see? At £170, 180 now. At £170, that remains with me. OK. At £170, it failed against a 180 reserve. Perhaps, Judith, the reserve was just that little bit too ambitious. On the day, it's one of those things that you just didn't quite make it. Next time around, there may be more buyers in the sale room and it can easily make it, but that's what the gamble is all about. Coming up, the name's Dickinson. David Dickinson. Dun, 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 yeah. You know, double, double oh seven. It's from Derby with Love after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from the Roundhouse here in Derby. Let's wing our way over to Simon's table. Will he stick his neck out for the next item? You brought in some pretty pink flamingos. I have some pink flamingos in. Yeah, they're actually the uh, mother-in-laws, but uh, I've been put on this table to sell them. Right. So don't you like these pink flamingos? Don't you want? I do quite like them. Yeah. I mean, would they you are like quite them old. on your mantelpiece? I wouldn't know. And if there was going to, I think if there was going to be passed down, I don't think they'd last very long. No. In our house with a small. quite a delicate thing. If they are. Got yeah. Small kids. Well, I had a quick look at these earlier. Underneath, we've got the stamp here, and it says Karamos. Yeah. That's a, an Austrian factory, and um, they're quite well known for making sort of Art Deco figures. So I do yeah. buy quite a few of their okay. things normally. This is sort of obviously more, probably a little bit later, what, 1930s, something okay. like that. And they're a pair of pink flamingos. They're modelled quite well. Yeah. Um, not everybody's taste, Good I have to too, say. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of thing that... Um, wonder quite what you do with it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I suppose someone somewhere will collect oh, pink flamingos. Because yeah. yeah. people collect everything nowadays. Yeah, they do. So, the thing is, how much is it worth? It's up to you to make me an offer, Simon. I don't think it's one of the most valuable items we've ever had on the show. But I will make you an offer for it. Yeah. And I would like to offer you, for your pretty pink flamingos, 10, 15 pounds. No, it's not enough, Simon. Not enough? No. What do you think it's worth? Well, I'd like you to make me an offer. I have, 15 quid. Well, more, please. <laughs> more. More. Well, look, what I'll do is I'll take that 15 pounds away, I'll put down 20 pounds. That's my final offer for that, Nigel. Is that your final offer? Not five pound more? Not no. one pound more. Not one pound more. I'm hoping you're going to say no and take it to auction. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, we've come here, come here today anyway, and. Um, 
we would uh, like to accept that offer because uh, we don't really want to go to auction. And you'd rather have the twenty pound woods. Yeah. What are you going to do with that vast amount of money? It would go to the uh, kids for their uh, summer holidays. Oh well, that's a fair, yeah. fair thing then. And we don't so really want to take. You'd it rather out. have the twenty pound than the pink flamingos. We would, yeah. So would I, but never mind. I've got the pink flamingos instead. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in today, Thank Nigel. You Cheers. Thank you. Jewelry is the name of the game for our next deal. But will this charm bracelet cast its spell on Alison? This is all your silver loot. Yes. Is it all yours? Uh, mine and my partner's, yes. Excellent. And is that your partner there? It is, yes, yeah. just hiding behind yeah. the... Back. Is he a tough man to do business with? <laughs> oh, well, jolly good. I should enjoy that then. So what about all these pieces? So which bits are yours? Uh, well, basically, I paid for them all to start with anyway, you know, and each time as we've travelled around different places, different countries, we've bought the odd one and uh, Adam had joined too. So your history is on my table? Yes, part the, of my history. All the places that you've, you've visited? Yep. That makes me feel a bit sad, really. Well, life goes on, doesn't it? So, Ooh, life does know. go on. And there's... Uh, Hopefully there's more changes, more places to see. Are you going to upgrade now to gold? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying for you. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, then. Let's get the money out. OK. And uh, 50. 100. Yeah, we're getting somewhere near. I think we're getting quite near. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 110. No, there's um, there's a lot of silver there, isn't there? I should be able to scrap that for about 140. And yeah. I expect to make... Hello! Is I it, expect to make about £30 profit. Do, do, do you think it's as dire that you have to scrap the two bracers? Surely aren't those worth keeping for a young girl or... I don't know, for a child, they're very pretty. It is, the thing is, David, that and there are a couple that I shall keep. Um, this poodle I will keep, and I will actually be able to sell that by Monday morning because right. the lady next door to me has a pet shop and she's big time into poodles. Right, so she'll buy but that. But then the others, you know, they are what they are. Well, well I've noticed there's a mall on there. And I go big game fishing, you know, in the Caribbean. So maybe I'm the right kind of person to sell that to. Indeed. Would you like to try to sell it to him? <laughs> well, no, I'll let you sell it to him okay. afterwards. I think there's a very interesting little parcel there. Is that it? Can you scrape up any more money to persuade our seller not to go to auction? Well, you know, I'm, I'm quite fair, but I think I'm entitled to make 30-odd quid on well, this, to be honest. You know, you... Our dealers do have to make a living at this, and we must always remember they've got to sell the merchandise. I'm going to say £110 is not a bad price, but you probably could get a bit more by going to auction, but you have to gamble to do that, and it's your call. Thank you, David. I, I think my £110, it's, it's an open book. I mean, I had, he's told you I'll make £34 profit, and, and the profit has to be made. Yes. All right then, Alison, I'll do a deal with you. You sure? £110. All right, we've got a deal, Robert. Thank you very much. Thank you, darling. Thank, Thank you. you. That's a deal well done. Now it's over to Michael. Will he be shaken but not stirred? Paul, thanks for coming in today. Tell us what you brought in. Uh, it's a James Bond Toyota 2000 GT. Uh, it's from the, the film. Uh, you only live twice, I believe. Exactly true. And where did you get it from? It was actually uh, a friend was clearing out his loft and he kindly let me have it. Oh, wow. Bizarrely, it's never been air fixed together because that's by air fix. Yeah. It's an air fix kit which you would have made up. Yeah. Uh, there were several items, all air fix, uh, some not as old, but I don't know why it was never done. Just no. a toy unwanted. Well, I tell you what it does you become a time traveller. It takes me right back to the 1960s when it actually came out, the film. I remember going to the pictures to see it. And I think everyone associates James Bond with the Aston Martin DB5. Whereas this Toyota 2000 GT was only in one film. Yeah. 
And as far as I believe, the convertible never went into production. It was only ever shown on the film and in the kit. Yeah. When you're looking to buy this sort of stuff, you also look at the ephemera associated with it. And this box comes under the ephemera. Yeah. Now, when I first looked at it, I got quite excited. I thought, this is a nice little bit of kit. But then you start looking a bit closer, you see someone's inked this in, which has defaced it, really. Yeah. You know, it's creased and it's got a few knocks on it. Can you see that bit there where they filled in the O's? Yeah. And as you start looking closer and closer, it's more and more defaced. Um, so to buy this for a collector or to sell it on again, the mark is quite limited. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm not putting it down, but you, know, you need to point out these sort of things. Yeah, sure. People like, and they say, why aren't you paying that much money for it? But this is why we don't pay yeah. the top end of the price for it, because of the defacement and because the bit's missing and a bit of damage here and there. So I will give you £10 for it. <laughs> All right, OK, you're making me cry. 20 quid. It costs you more to buy a new one. You get no, a new one for not. £20, couldn't you? A new Airfix model would be £20. Yeah, but what am I going to do with it, apart from, like, make it up one day? And... Yeah. Be a nice weekend hobby for you, that one, too. Yeah. Get your glue out Dated and your out little out here. paint out. I've dug myself out. You know you want to make that car <laughs> up, don't you, Hoggy? Dun, 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 yeah. You know, double, double oh seven. Yeah. That's not Billy Smith. It's double oh seven James Bond. That's the association. Get another tenner in, Hoggy. Send the guy home, really, with a smile on his face. No right, yeah. I told you, he'll be making that up next week in his little room. <laughs> oh, that's it for me. Thirty quid. Can't go a bit higher. Well, I think the only way you get more money out of that is take it to auction. Yeah. A lot of collectors out there who would like the airfix could see the rarity. Yeah, I'll take it to auction. Do you know what? I think you've made exactly the right decision. I'm so pleased you did. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up after the break... They like it. Maybe they all think they'll be James Bond once they've reconstructed this car. Will the bidders be able to keep their gold fingers off this item? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Before the break, we saw Michael make an offer on the James Bond GT, but the dealer's den is not enough. The only way you get more money out of that is take it to auction. Yeah, I'll take it to auction. Let's see if the real deal is in the auction room. Now, you came along the deal's day and you sat down with Michael Hogburn. Now, Michael, I think he fancies himself as a bit of a James Bond, don't you, Michael? So, I thought he might have bid a little bit more, but he bid 30 quid. Yeah. What did you think about that offer? Uh, I thought it was a poor bid. Michael, really? you heard it from the man, bit of a poor bid. So, you decided to gamble. Yeah. It's here with a 30 pound reserve. Have you done the right thing? I hope so. You think so? We'll see. I think you've done the right thing. It's coming up now. Let's see what happens. Lot number 865 is the Airfix James Bond Toyota, never been assembled, four bids on commission. Starts with me at £45.50, do I see? At £45, I'm bidding 50. Well, it's over the reserve, it's £45. Pounds. 60, now, at £60, I'm bidding 5, 70. They like it. Maybe they all think they'll be James Bond once they've reconstructed this car. At £75, all done. At 75 Gabler's just gone down at £75. Take away the commission, that's going to leave you with 64 Are you happy with that result? Very happy indeed, okay. yeah. £30 was the offer from Michael Hogburn. You turned that down, you gambled, you were right. The real deal was here in the sale room, 64 quid. The day's drawing to a close. A big name has caused a stir, but will David be bowled over? Hello, Rose. I'm David Hankney. Pleased to meet you. I do. Well, wow, a very jazzy piece of uh, pottery you've brought in it's here. It's unusual, isn't it? Tell me something about it. Uh, well, it belongs to my partner. Um, his late wife was a, not a collector, but she used to, um, she was keen on collecting things from The 1930s. Oh, and sorry. She, she, she did like um, yeah. Did she buy this at a car boot? Um, he's not quite sure. It'll either be an antiques fair or a car boot. And she did think that it was possibly worth something because of the it is so unusual well it's by the uh, the very well-known name of Clarice Cliff I mm. presume mm -hmm. 
There she is, Clarice Cliff. Bazaar. And it is very bizarre, isn't it? Very. And it's in very nice condition. Some people would say it was quite unattractive. I quite like it myself. Uh, well, you can imagine in its day, in the 1930s, when this was made, it would be really quite uh, something, wouldn't mm. it? You know. Mm. Well, um, shall I get some cash out and see if I can tempt you? We can do. Well, let's say a uh, hundred pounds won't buy it, will it? One fifty. Two hundred pounds. We're warming up. It's getting closer, but no. <laughs> 250. I'm going to go straight in for 300 pounds here because I really like this uh, piece of pottery, this piece of Clarice Cliff. Is that enough? No. Afraid not. Am no. I getting close? Are you getting a little bit warmer? But... What about 320? No. Now, Rose, 350, that's a lot of money for a little bit of pottery like this, isn't it? It probably is. cost five bob. <laughs> um, when it was made? It's not. It's, it's not what we've been advised. Oh, really? Yeah. Tell me what you've been advised. Uh, around about between four and six hundred. Do you think so? Mm. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do with you. I'll give you... four hundred pounds for it, and I think that's where I want to be. What do you think? It's not quite enough. If you can offer a bit more... Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to offer you £30 more, and that would leave me a tiny profit because I've done a little bit of homework on this piece of pottery, and I think it's probably worth around about the 450 But if you fancy a gamble at the auction, that's up to you. I'm not trying to miss this because I like it. I'm trying Put another hard. Another 20 to buy. down there, we might have a deal. I don't think I want to put another 20 because I couldn't get anything out of it. No? You, I've got to earn something, you know. Oh, I know, I know. This is my uh, hard-earned money, all this. But if you fancy the auction gamble, I'm not offended. OK, we'll take it. You've done the right thing. Yes, I think so. You have. Thank you very much. I promise you. Thank you. Enjoy the money. Well played, Rose. You bagged yourself a good deal there. Let's see if our dealers did as well today. David offered £20 for the three vintage purses. I would have no hesitation in putting your delicate hand across that table <laughs> before this mind. clever dealer realises <laughs> what he's paid. Well, he did pay a little too much as he made a small loss. But he'd better look with the Clarice Cliff Bowl, which he sold to American collectors for £455. Wow, this is a nice lot, Paul, isn't it? Yes, I'm glad you like it. I can see that uh, going somewhere to someone I know. It did indeed go to someone he knows. The train station has winged its way to Australia, where Michael has given it to his brother, who's a collector. The Royal Dalton has found itself a new home in Alison's collection. You did say you liked it, didn't you? It was going to come home with me the moment I saw it on my table. The chains, charms and rings all went into the melting pot, earning Alison a small profit. Simon bought the silver pocket watch, chain and stamp case for £80. I think also if you put it in auctions, to be honest with you, Keith, I don't think you're going to end up with much more than that at the end of the day. He then sold them on for 120 making him joint dealer of the day with Alison. We've had a great day here in Derby. There's been plenty of action, just the way we like it. Lots of bidding and lots of buying. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now. <laughs> <laughs>